Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to join our robust design certificate program information section. How many of you who have never tasted popcorn before? Think about the traditional way of popcorn making. If the popcorn does not taste good, well, what do we do? So we certainly figure out how to solve the problem and standardize the experience. However, this kind of experience is still difficult to follow for the people who had no exposure to the popcorn making before, isn't it? Let's look at today's popcorn making in microwave. Anyone, including kids, can put a bag of a popcorn in a microwave and turn on a switch. There's no need to worry about the sound of a last pop and the temperature. In other words, the quality of popcorn came out from the microwave is not sensitive to the age and the experience. This is kind of idea about robust thinking. We want to share with you and see how we might make our products better, faster, and cheaper all the way through this kind of uh, robust thinking. Hi, I am Dr. Matthew Hu. I have the privilege to learn and work with Dr. Jinichi Tokuchi, who is the creator and father of robust engineering to solve industrial problems and improve competitive advantages using robust design. Today, I partner with University of Houston to develop and offer the robust design certificate program to enable, empower you to develop robust product and technologies to achieve the world's class quality, reliability, and productivity for the next level of business success. What you can take away from today's information sections are First, the robustness thinking. Second, about the robust design certification program. Last but not least, certainly the benefits of the robust design certificate program. The benefits of the robust design certificate program is always to empower, enable us to achieve better, faster, and cheaper in business at the lowest possible costs. Let's look at the story in 2018, Uber failures in self-driving vehicle accident. So it is important to understand the limitation of new technologies in a given time. Technologies are always evolving, improving, but not necessarily mature enough for application. It's critical to develop and understand the behavior of a given technologies. As a matter of fact, today we are totally dependent on technologies. For example, artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things are among the the technologies that have great scope and prospects for the future. Robust AI and IoT technologies development are essential for the next wave of productivity improvements. If we do not develop robust technologies and the robust product, even very simple product could create a big trouble for us. Let's look at this kind of simple mechanical crimping connector design. It was the oldest technologies and design. However, it created lots of trouble for business, which anybody who attending this training that you may thought is a simple case, but let's look at this simple study. If you 
are invited to join the problem solving, what would you do if you are facing the challenges of uh, connector disconnected, that kind of uh, challenges? You may think that's very simple, but as a matter of fact, from a design perspective, it is simple enough, but it's not simply enough for the problem solving simply given the fact there were lots of uh, uncontrollable user environments. Let's look at this picture. And when you cut off the crimping wire, look at the uh, from the cross-sectional perspective, you can you can see their kind of uh, voice and bubbles. That is really the kind of uh, troublemakers that creates a tremendous problems. That's a way beyond the traditional wisdom talking about reliability and quality. And also, interestingly enough, that this problem, even though it's a small, simple problem, but it has a two output responses related to this product design. First, it's kind of pole strength, isn't it? And second is talking about the voltage drop. And that's really serve the product design intent. If we attempt to solve the problem from thinking how to secure the reliability post strength. That's only one side of stories. However, from the whole big picture, that's not good enough. Let's review how we approach the problem solving through the traditional conventional approach. Really, from the left hand side, you see always necessary what we've been doing in the sense of uh, how we approach for problem solving, design test fix, test parts under the severe conditions, ignore the deteriorations, wear degradations, and also try to predict the operational lives. And that's good. And yet the challenges in that kind of traditional approach, no cost integrations, lack of uh, leading indicators, identify causes, last but not least, does not increase the technology development. And that's kind of problems we are facing in a traditional way of problem solving. And look at the problem self for this, the um, mechanical crimping connected design. The team went through all this uh, mandatory discipline approach in the sense of a design, uh, the uh, process FMEA, hall testing, design of experiments, a discipline approach talking about the operator training and the results. We have achieved limited results, but the problem comes back. Always big challenges. That's exactly what we are facing the dilemmas. On one hand, we claim that we follow the protocol that we have resolved the problems, but yet the problem kept comes coming back from the customer standpoint. That's really the indicators that we haven't done a good job enough to satisfy the customer needs. And that's kind of traditional challenge based on the traditional problem solving strategies and tools. And that is kind of what we call the symptom based problem solving. And that's what we need to be able to change, shift the paradigm to focus on the functional intents to solve the problem. By doing that way, we can be able to achieve a one stone killing two birds. Having reviewed the traditional challenge in the traditional way of problem solving, let's look at this P diagram for business thinking. First, look at the right hand side when we're talking about the ideal function. Really, this kind of thinking is try to reinforce the design intent to encourage the engineers to look at what's really design intent for regardless of what kind of design, really for designing a system, you always have a design intent. That's really what we call in this case, it's about the ideal function. Meaning we thought worlds are perfect. What do you do? What can you do? For example, we say when we design a motor, what do we want to get out from the motor design? Really for these uh, benefits of a motor design, there were two things only. One is the uh, torque and RPM, isn't it? So based on that kind of thinking, you're looking at that kind of systems and looking in the back, what triggered the input through the system so that we can see the system convert the input to output. If the world is perfect, that means that we can always have 100 
percent energy in and the hundred percent energy out if the wall is perfect certainly the walls never be perfect so that means we have to face the music in the reality we have to deal with those uncontrollable user environments for some of the noise factors we call and really talk about in the mass production talking about piece to piece variations talk about aging challenges talking about the customer usage talking about the external environments for example say temperature vibration dusty environments right so really from a design perspective what do the engineers have to control the systems really that kind of a knobs or parameters we call control factors so by looking at this picture if we can be able to optimize our system such that our performance meaning the output responses is not sensitive to harmful side effects of noise factors that will be really what we have been able to achieve and make our system in a sense of perfect given the presence of the noise factors and that's exactly the way that we would like to encourage and push the engineers all this uh, product development engineering philosophy strategies to push to achieve and maximize the design output and that's the, the traditional tremendous uh, differences between the uh, traditional way of thinking which focuses on the problems symptoms but in the way of a robust thinking we always think ahead what is a design intent what functions are we designing for so really can come to the point where it's asking question asking us how to optimize the systems such that that we can be able to maximize the control factors to desensitize the harmful side effects based on this kind of thinking as you can see that's exactly what we need to be doing to make our design insensitive to those uh, troublemakers we call this the uh, uncontrollable user environments that's called the noise factors there were five different carriers uh, categories of noise factors and we'll be sharing much more with you in the robust design certificate program where we're going to be learning exploring what are those control uh, noise factors and troublemakers and how can we be able to manage so that we can be able to minimize those uh, harmful side effects that is exactly what we have done in the uh, mechanical crimp connector design project where we were able to successfully solve the problem using robust design approach what we did differently is that we focused on the design intent and try to maximize the output in the, in the robust design strategies and maximize the intents really there was lots of detail specific for example say how to select the output responses rather than focus on the poor electrical conductions or percentage of failures with that we are able to solve the problem successfully the results are improved the post strength increased and also reduced the voltage drop and also improve the process capabilities at the lowest possible costs and without having introducing using the new technologies for some would say like like a, like a welding technologies and successfully improve the technologies improve the quality improve the customer satisfactions and this is the area of uh, robust design efforts really very simple it's a two-step optimization come to a point when we optimize the whole thing first we need to reduce variations that means that we need to shrink that kind of uh, variability and also find the turning factor to turn the target to where we want the designing for the, the output target performance and this is kind of the whole documentation of the mechanism of uh, problem solving using robust design really first to develop the uh, p diagram to reinforce thinking what do we want and how do we want what kind of challenges we are facing in the sense of uh, noise factors and also encourage the engineer to think what need to be measured 
to understand the functional behavior. And also using the orthogonal array to structure testing strategies and optimization efforts and really using kind of SN ratio to measure the functionalities from the engineering perspective. And then that's you can see this area we call the strength because that's all the design parameters. And here there's all the noise factors that we call the stress. And really from a reliability standpoint, although we don't talk about reliability today, but really how to separate those stress and strength so that we can have a maximized strength and minimize the impact of stress. That's a really kind of strategy is a robust design. And this is the last step that the confirm the robust design efforts and demonstrate the success of reliability and the, uh, the, the report really show that reliability has been improved significantly and really tap into the traditional wisdom for some would say from a reliability standpoint we still use the whiteboard analysis you see once you got the uh, problem solving in such phase that we gain significant engineering confidence rather than the statistical sample size confidence with that that's really what we're looking for especially in the upfront design phase what can we do to improve the engineering confidence at the lowest possible costs in a shorter time so let's recap why robust design really robust design enable and empower to solve the problems robustness to solve the problems instead of pushing hard for the problem solving, really look at from a design standpoint, what can be relaxed from the tolerance standpoint and see what can we be able to handle the design so that we can be tolerate much more better um, and in, enable that kind of uh, tolerance for this the uh, insensitive uh, variations. And also you can see the approach that the robust is not only solving the problem, but it is an approach to make money. As you can see, this is the high level summary, what the robust technology development, robust design can help us and empower, enable our success further at the lowest possible costs. And the traditional way of problem solving, just to keep fighting the problems, taking the firefighting all the time, and that's the problems we have end up with always never ending problem solvings and end up with we waste time, waste energy, or the effort cannot be converged for the success. And this is the typical case study of Design for Six Sigma. Really, the Design for Six Sigma, the heart of Design for Six Sigma is a robust design. At the beginning of this project, the project had been resolved for many times. And each time, the team learns significant lessons. But every time when the team claims success, the customer always kept coming back. It signals that the challenge of this problem itself. It turns out this problem was not only the problems that we encountering for the big troubles, but truly it's kind of a birth defect challenges. So really robust design, robust thinking and robust design strategies could help us to assess, evaluate the birth healthiness of the design. And given that kind of health design, we can be able to successfully to improve the understanding of the current technologies and current designs. Keep optimizing a lousy design is not always successful. So the point is to implement robust design, robust strategies, robust thinking. We can always think upfront to develop robust concept design so that we can have a healthy birth and also have to lay down on the uh, robust optimization, have a much better 
stronger, healthier product with much more customer satisfactions. With all the sharing about robustness thinking, in the problem solving, in the product development at the lowest possible costs, robustness thinking, as a matter of fact, this uh, robustness thinking model could be used to describe, to create or develop a very healthy quality and reliability engineering education program. For example, in this P diagram, if we want to be able to develop, train the high qualified quality and reliability engineers, we better have that kind of some of the control factors, faculty, curriculum, certificate, and all the way through the whole list. However, realize that the challenge is that not always perfect. So we talk about the faculty to faculty variations and students to student variations, the social environment, job market variations, right? And talking about this input, talking about funding, quality, reliability, and also the qualities in the, the students into the program. So really that kind of whole thing, you know, way of a robust and thinking is always applicable in all many different systems, especially as long as the systems are being engineered, you can always apply the thinking of a robustness to describe the, what's the design intents. And really thinking is that you have to perceive or anticipate what cannot be controlled. And how can we optimize the systems so they maximize the system's outputs. So with that, let's keep going. That's what we have shared and learned about this uh, robust design, robust design thinking and really in the sense of uh, robust engineering, which has so many different dimensions. You talk about this uh, robust engineering and concept design, talking about the parameter designs, tolerant designs, all the way through the online quality control. So really robust engineering is a very powerful program which can help enable our society to develop a really well strong qualified reliability quality engineers along with the product engineering in which including all the mechanical engineering electrical electronic engineering disciplines hardware and software disciplines and really talk about the engineering disciplines and in, in the sense of uh, robust engineering efforts so really what you can take away from this information section today Robust design is essential to achieve competitive advantages. Second, most important that today's uh, purpose is for this uh, information section that we need to take a robust design certificate training at the University of Houston, really that help and enable you to make your design incentive to the uncontrollable user environment. That's really why you have to be here to be well trained, communicated, explore the disciplines so that you can have an upfront planning to plan your efforts to comply this kind of engineering disciplines upfront. Earlier development of a robustness is always a key for proactive quality and reliability. Applied robust design principles at early design stage of a design to forecast problems and take the preventive action. As for today, Robust Design Certificate Training Program Logistics, um, the certificate program will start the first wave, three days training, which is going to be on October 1st, 8th, and 15th. And start from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So, if you are the individual responsible for increasing product quality, reliability, process and reducing costs in design, development, and manufacturing, and supply chain. You better come to have this robust design training. Specialists having input to the product and process design improve the uh, validation test effectiveness and efficiencies and all the reliability efforts. You should always pay attention and come to this training. With that, I turn this uh, our, our uh, next section for Q&A. Thank you.